Hey, what's up? This is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints, and this one's awesome. It's with Andy Wong. He's from Dumpling Mafia, but he's a food writer based in Los Angeles. You've seen his stuff in Food & Wine, as well as Rob Report, and tons of other publications. An amazing writer, super intelligent, very knowledgeable about food, and the food scene not just in Los Angeles, but across the United States. I know he focuses a lot on uh, Las Vegas as well. I'll put links to his stuff below, but first off, <laughs> I've been pronouncing his name all along the wrong way. It's Andy Wong. It's spelled W-A-N-G, so I always thought it was Andy Wang, but it's Andy Wong, so that way, that's, <laughs> first off, to get that out of the way, now you know the correct pronunciation of his name. But I wanted to talk to him because I was curious about this Dumpling Mafia and this NFT that they had put out, and I'm delving a little bit into the NFT world, so I was curious about what it was all about and then I realized after we started talking that this could be a great primer and an opening for a lot of people who don't understand what NFTs are and maybe aren't even really familiar with crypto. So at the very beginning, we talk a lot about that world. And if you're interested at all or just want to be a fly on the wall, you have an opportunity to learn a little bit from us and then move forward. I'll put links below to different things so you can learn more about that world. But he specifically with Carolyn Chin, Chef Shirley Chung, the artist, narrator, street artist, have put out this NFT, which is still available to Mint. I'll put a, a link below. And it's not just an NFT. It's an NFT, but also it unlocks potentially doors to virtual get-togethers as well as to different events in Los Angeles, dumpling events. So it has a lot more potential. And he talks about the potential for restaurants and what restaurants can potentially do with this NFT space. So it's not necessarily barbecue related. We do mention two barbecue spots, one in Los Angeles, one in Texas. But it's food related, NFT related. So if you're interested in that world or just want to hear about it, I think if you don't know anything about it, after you're done listening, I think you'll have learned a lot and at least you'll have a better grasp of what's going on. It is the future and it's something that's going to stick around. So I can't thank Andy enough for taking the time. As I mentioned, I'll put links below to tons of stuff. And I mentioned things in the actual interview that I'll put links below. So I'll put links below that. I'll put links to everything that we've discussed specifically. So hopefully you could, you know, as a fly on the wall. None of this is, none of this, of course, is financial advice, but it is a world that you can delve in and you can check it out without even having to, to purchase anything. I know you guys are really going to enjoy this. And if you're digging these, please subscribe. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button. I'm doing one or two of these per week. I have a website at kevinsbbqjoints.com, Kevin's BBQ Joints on all the social media. By the end, stay safe and visit your local barbecue joint. Good morning, Andy. How are you? Good. How are you, Kevin? I'm doing well. I'm, uh, things are things are different since the last time we talked. I think we talked kind of maybe a few weeks into the pandemic. Yeah, or... really early into the pandemic, yeah. I remember. I mean, I, a lot has changed. I mean, you said you said good morning. You should really be saying GM. I mean, that's the main thing that's changed, <laughs> right? Exactly. And is it lowercase GM? I think that's how you, you're really supposed to do it. It's what a weird world. Like the world is like, things are so much different than the last time we spoke. We did, did. Were you even involved in the NFT world at all, or did you? You were in crypto, I was right? involved in crypto the last time we spoke. I mean, probably pretty deeply in crypto, but I not in the NFTs really. Yeah, I think so, you were yeah. one of the first people I saw with the talking about what Robinhood or you were talking. I think that was or something you were tweeting about. Crypto, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's entirely possible. I mean, yeah, I yeah. think what's happened because, as you know, I cover restaurants too. Yeah. There's a lot of people in the restaurant business who had a very, very hard time last year. And a lot of them have sort of brought a little bit of justice back into their world just via their Robinhood accounts or their Coinbase accounts. And I don't really need to get into exactly what they're doing, but there are certainly people I know who are pastry chefs that like now own board apes, right? Yeah. And there are people I know who are line cooks at really, really popular restaurants that did pop-ups and just started putting the money into different coins, you know? that were associated with, you know, different domesticated animals and they've done well. I mean, it's like, yeah, because I don't want to like pump anybody's bags, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, when exactly. I mentioned Bored Apes is it pumping a bag at this point. But yeah, that, yeah, that doesn't are, matter because they've yeah, already, they're already there. Like that's Yeah, but yeah, but it's undeniable that crypto, you know, and it's many elements have changed lives for the better, including a lot of people in the restaurant world who now, you know, had a very, very tough year, but some of them like, they can take a moment to relax and figure out what mm -hmm. they want to do next. Or they suddenly have all these other ideas where, you know, my old job was I had to work 15 hours a day to make a 3% margin as the owner of the, this restaurant. This is completely stupid. <laughs> I can go stink some things that I bought and make passive income 
And also it's appreciated so much that, yeah, maybe I should just go do something else. Or maybe it's fine for me just to take a job where I'm not an owner, where I get paid a good amount of money and just keep that. Because what's the point of owning this weird physical space that has like all these burdensome things? The reality is it's like chefs and restaurant owners are going to do this forever (laughs) because they love restaurants. They love the community. So they're going to keep doing it. But I think what a lot of people are finding out is that crypto NFT, it's a different community. It represents you know, it represents freedom in sort of a different and new way, mm-hmm. you know, and it sort of is about like innovation because it's like, look, ghost kitchens, whatever. I know those exist, but for the most part, the business model for a restaurant hasn't changed in decades, you know? Uh-uh. No, not at all, at all. And the yeah. way they run, they the way they work, it's things have changed over the last few years for the better as it deals with interpersonal relationships between employees and things. I think that yeah. there's been that shift, but the way that a restaurant runs and the margins and the taxes and everything that they have to deal with and the employee, there's a lot, it hasn't changed in decades. Yeah. So, you know, you're basically dealing with a world where it's just all dinosaurs, mm-hmm. you know, and there are basically like different asteroids coming at them and they just keep dodging them, but wondering if the next asteroid is the one that's just going to mm-hmm. destroy everything versus this world where for lack of a better comparison, I know this is an elegant where in terms of crypto, you get to be the asteroid in some cases, you know? That's interesting. I never thought of it that way. Yeah. And expl- explain, well, let's, let's talk about NFTs in general. Then we'll jump into the Dumpling Mafia and we'll talk about a bunch sure. of other stuff. But, but for those that don't know what an NFT is, why don't you uh, explain what that is? In sure. Best, in the I best mean, way you can. I, I could try, but I... An NFT is a non-fungible token on a digital ledger known as a blockchain that's like the most basic thing and then you tell people that and like the fuck are you talking about and it's like yeah you've already lost like 95 percent. there's a public ledger of transactions that exists right you know one of the better known ones the most popular ones is obviously the ethereum network Mm -hmm. right it is a thing that shows proof of ownership proof Mm -hmm. of transfer right and the thing that you can do with this is you can buy, sell, and trade different assets digitally. Yeah. And one of the you know, best and most interesting ways this has been done through NFTs is by people creating digital art or other digital creations, could be music, mm-hmm. and then bestowing you know, some sort of ownership right. In some cases, people get full commercial rights, right? Yeah, exactly, which is crazy. To people, who, to, people who buy, to people who buy these things. And then it can be traded infinite number of times. You can go and look and see the history of how something is traded. Yeah, which is and so fascinating. Look, a year ago, explaining this shit to people would be like, what? All right, get the fuck out of here with this. <laughs> now there's an easier way to do this, right? Where what I do now is I go, look, If you don't want to believe NFTs or mass culture, that's fine. But let's just go on Twitter for two minutes. And then I'm like, let's go look at Reese Witherspoon's profile picture. And it's an NFT. It's a world of women. Let's go look at Jay-Z's. It's a crypto punk. Let's go look at Steph Curry. Steph Curry, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, he's got a fucking board ape. And then you're just like, this board ape is worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. Steph Curry paid $180,000 for this. Look, I know Steph Curry ended up getting sponsored by FTX and also $180,000 is like me buying something that's 80 cents at the grocery store. <laughs> but this yeah. is real money. Jay-Z mm-hmm. got a good price for CryptoPunk, but there are CryptoPunks that are that are in the millions right now. You mm-hmm. know, Steve Aoki, that famous DJ, he keeps changing his profile pic because he's he's like bought all of these NFTs. So now you're just saying, well, these are fucking JPEGs. What the hell is going on? And so... There are two things that are going on, I guess. And one is just that, you know, this point has been made more eloquently on Twitter by other people, right? Is this thing that that people are talking about called the metaverse that Mark Zuckerberg is building. <laughs> the metaverse has been existing for a while. You can argue that the metaverse is a place for all your digital stuff, or you can argue like some people are arguing that the metaverse is a representation of this moment in time where a lot of us, especially during the pandemic, are living most of our existences, not at restaurants, not at nightclubs, not at bars, not at public places, but on our fucking phones, on our, phones, and on our yeah. computers. So the things that we have on our phones and computers become the most valuable parts of our lives in some ways. Meaning that like, if you're the type of person, if you're like Jay-Z in the hip hop world, right? Your biggest flex, maybe you're a crypto punk because- 
everybody sees your crypto punk. During a pandemic, you have a bunch of Bugattis. You may drive this one Bugatti three times, right? Or you have a Rolex or a Patek Philippe. Or a you got to physically Fiat fucking go somewhere to yeah. for people to see this. Yeah. Everybody on fucking Twitter sees Jay Z's crypto punk, right? That's true. That's very it's true. It's just new. <laughs> it's just new flex, right? Uh-huh. And then the other part of it is just like the interesting thought experiment is like, what is an asset worth? What gives it value? Because it's like, look, we know this with art. There's like modern art where it's basically a black circle on a white background. There's modern art, you know, like an art Basel where somebody taped a fucking banana to the wall. You know, there's modern art where Banksy destroyed something and it ended up being worth more than it was. More than- Who gets to decide this? Well, guess what? The marketplace gets to decide it. And in cryptocurrency, it's trying, what it's trying to be is like the most efficient marketplace ever, right? So there's this well-known artist that we all know, Damien Hirst, right? He has this NFT called the currency. This is the thing that when you tell people, they're like, oh, I start to get it a little bit. Meaning that, so Damien Hirst, you know, who does these colorful paintings, he has this colorful dot art and he's made thousands of NFTs. Uh, Each one of the NFTs corresponds to an actual physical piece of art that's like locked in some vault. And there's going to be a date where if you own the NFT, you get to make a decision. And the decision is meant to be thought provoking because Damien Hirst is just like, let's have a real conversation about Mm -hmm. what the value of art is. So on this date, you decide you get to keep the NFT, but we're going to take the piece of physical art that corresponds to it and we're going to destroy it. Mm -hmm. Or we're going to burn your NFT on the blockchain and it's gone. And we're going to send you the piece of physical art because you know there's been decades where Damien Hirst's physical art has been valued at a certain amount. So at this point, people are going to be like, it's going to be such a mindfuck of reverse, reverse psychology. What's the right decision? Well, clearly, Damien Hirst is telling me that I should keep the NFT. So that means that I should actually take the painting and vice versa. But no, wait, it's it's like some trick. And I'm just like, when is the last time art has actually made you think about yes. this, right? Uh-huh. It made you make and these an actual things are decision. trading for tens of thousands of dollars right now, right? And it's kind of crazy. And I don't want to name who this person is because although it's all public, you know, there's a prominent TV producer in the food world who bought one of our NFTs, our Dumpling Mafia NFTs, which we'll get to in a little bit. Yeah. I looked in her wallet and she casually has like three Damien Hurts. <laughs> and I'm like, well, if you have three, fuck it. Take one painting and then keep the other two, right? I mean, that's sort of the other interesting thing where you know, it's not that people want one Rolex or one Banksy or whatever. They want to be part of this wave and ride it. So a mm-hmm. lot of people who are really into NFTs, they have multiple board apes and multiple crypto punks. And one of them is their forever one, right? That's the one that they will never fucking sell. That's the one that like is associated with their identity. But then if it 10Xs, fine, I'll sell one of these other apes mm-hmm. and then I'll go buy whatever, 50 atom bombs. And then I'll keep <laughs> the five atom bombs that I really want. And the other 45, <laughs> Can go can go back on the market, you know, or I can go buy a gutter cat or a pool cat. And I love the fact that half of your audience right now thinks that I'm like speaking in gibberish or that I, we're just I naming love it. No, shit. I love it so much. <laughs> but once you get into it, and I know that you're into it, Kevin, you're just like it's fun. You bet it. It's you're, so you're just fun. Like sitting to... in your wallet saying, I have two lazy lions. If I sell this one lazy lion, you know, I can go basically buy an unlimited supply of dirty dogs that came out yesterday. Should I just do that? These are literally the things that people think about every day on top of thinking about like my other investments and how I actually am going to make money and dealing, you know, with my actual job. A lot of people really wake up and they manage their crypto portfolio, which may be coins, which may be, um, uh, which may be JPEGs, you know, which may yeah, be a audio. Big mix, yeah. Yeah. yeah audio because, as well, yeah. You really need to be quick on a lot of this stuff to sort of make maximum impact because there have definitely been times where there's people I know who just like they slept through some drop that they were whitelisted for and they're just like, fuck, I can still go get this right now. But everything in the secondary market just happened in the last three hours. Mm-hmm. So maybe I just missed that first wave and I got to wait a month for it to happen again. You know? Yeah. And, and, and there is there is this learning curve. It took me a while my friend was involved with it and then i had to get, uh, get an open c account get metamask i mean oh there's all these different things that i had to do that i think w- once you get into it, it it becomes second nature but it was it took a little bit of, of figuring out to make it yeah, it is it's hard the first time you know yeah. and that's why like smart people like the team at the hundreds 
or making videos and then also just like posting like look buy ethereum on coinbase yes. move it to metamask this might take several days because you need things to clear the first time go to the minting site click on this button but then on top of it you have to explain the idea of like gas fees to people and also explain to people it's like i'm not ripping you off mm -hmm. and also if your transaction fails and you lose gas that is actually not really my fault unless I built a site where I set the gas too low. Yeah. So you end up with a lot of people who just have a bad taste in their mouth the first time. But then the people, as you know, a lot of people we know who dive in, then they realize that like, this is kind of the greatest thing that they've ever kind discovered. Of, yes. Yes. <laughs> and they're happy that they're, and they're happy that they're first. Right. And their scars are the fact that like, you know, I'm not a rich person that I put three meta three Ethereum in my MetaMask and I probably burned one Ethereum just making mistakes, buying dumb shit, having failed transaction, paying too much gas because I didn't realize that you should wait for it to be cheaper, going on OpenSea because it's a wild west and buying the fake collection instead of the real collection. <laughs> so it sounds like the things that I'm saying are kind of a, de a deterrent. But, the... but at the same time, what I'm really trying to tell people is that just like with buying Bitcoin and Ethereum, you know, and you've heard stories about hacks or being lost or whatever. You think it's too early to do this, right? On one level. And then you think it's too late to do this, right? Because you missed out on the 20X or whatever. What I'm telling you now is that it's starting to get infrastructure. It is getting better. There are smart people. There are billion dollar companies. There are Wall Street firms. There are, you know, tech entrepreneurs who've done two, three things. There's Mark fucking Zuckerberg, right? Disney, they're, Disney in the has figuring, they're in the middle of figuring this out. So, yeah. You're not. It's the beginning. Early. It's really. It really is the beginning. Even though you're not there too was late. A, yeah, you, not this too may late. be the right time. You think you're late, but it, in a way, it's not. It's still early. And Martha Stewart, Reese Witherspoon, Jay Z, whoever, they're all just starting to figure this stuff out now. It's just the beginning, and it's maybe not the beginning to maybe you're not going to have a crypto punk or a board ape, but you're going to get some things that have value. And also, too, I'm starting <clears> to buy <throat> things that I want to buy, like not necessarily I'm looking to make. Billion yeah, dollars. you should treat NFT, you should treat cryptocurrency itself probably as an, an investment. This is yeah. not investment advice, but meaning that a lot of people obviously have bought Bitcoin as an investment and that's, mm -hmm. and that's paid off for them, right? A lot of people have bought Ethereum as an investment. You should, for most people, <clears throat> you should treat NFTs as a fun hobby mm -hmm. where you buy stuff that you like. Exactly. It took me a little while to figure that out, to figure, to get yeah. to that right, correct headspace because... I think that's the time. And then you're going to, if you get a bunch of things that you do like or, or support projects like yours, there's going to things that'll moon and that'll, that, that'll, yeah. it. and, and, and backing it's up top. a little bit, it's a lot of these NFTs are, are about community, right? People want to feel like they're part of something. So a lot of them have elaborate roadmaps. And I guess yeah. this is a good segue to our dumpling mafia NFT. Yeah, let's do that. And then also too, like really quick, I'm going to put a bunch of links to videos on how to get a MetaMask, how to do, how to, how to oh, great. coin bank. And, and it, again, none of this is investment advice. If you see the, just link off and see, and they, people can check them out and uh, get advice or they could write either of us to get some. Yeah, no. And I'm just going to say that everything that you've heard about it, we're like, people are buying memes. People are just trading JPEGs. People are buying things that are parodies of something. Uh, I don't disagree with any of that. So again, not financial advice. Do yeah. your own research as you say, but honestly with NFTs, kind of just have fun and find communities that you like or watch it from afar and mock it. I mean, who cares? Sure. Just yeah, be part yeah. of the conversation, you yeah. know? Yeah, at least you'll understand it. Once they started to understand it and also too, it kind of feels like, and I, I think this will be the case for anybody listening or watching is that you feel like you're part of a world that not everyone understands. And that's fun too, to be yeah. like, it's it's, it's right now there's it's not like everybody's aunt understands what's happening or or cousin it's like a, most people i know don't don't understand and so if you're watching this and you're curious this is a chance so let's talk about dumpling mafia all right our plug you can mint dumpling mafia at dumplingmafianft.com we have 4888 um uh, unique nfts inspired by chef shirley chung who you know from top chef her progressive Chinese American food. We have this really great street artist narrator who designed different dumplings and bows and wontons and a baby pig dragon because um, uh, 
Shirley and her husband because they're Chinese. They're associated with pigs and dragons because of when they were born. Uh. Th- that part is fun. You know, there are in real life perks. Like if you're in Los Angeles, you know, you get entered into drawings for, you know, different events that Shirley's throwing with her dumplings. If you're not in LA, there's, you know, virtual meet and greets. And honestly, we've already done it. We're just going to keep adding value because we've already done a couple parties. You were invited to one, Kevin. Yeah. Like, like, you know, <laughs> uh, and, you know, with great food, we, you know, are doing something with a prominent art gallery soon. And we're just going to keep doing more and more. And we're not going to have <clears throat> an official roadmap because here's sort of what I want to get into, meaning that a lot of these other NFTs, they have to have these elaborate roadmaps because they have to convince people that they need to build a community. Chefs, and I'm not just talking about our NFT because I encourage other chefs to do this. Chefs live and breathe and are just at the restaurants all the time. The community exists. Chefs aren't going anywhere. There's literally already a brick and mortar venue mm-hmm. that they go to every single day. You know where to find them. And so buying an NFT from a chef, it may be a way just to connect with them in a deeper way you know, unlock certain, unlock certain perks, certainly like smart chefs could do a thing <clears throat> where you walk into a restaurant, use a crypto ATM from our friends at coin cloud. These are our friends who helped us create the NFT, yeah, yeah. buy an NFT and sit down and you get to eat for free because you're not really eating for free. Cause you already bought some paths via your NFT, right? Like think about howling rays could tokenize oh, yeah. something where you could actually skip the line. Moosecraft Barbecue could do that. Aaron Franklin could do this. Think about all these experiences that people are already paying for, right? Where it could just be a $300 NFT ends up being your line pass where you get to cut the line two times and we're going to give you a special off-menu mm-hmm. sandwich or something, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that <clears throat> there's opportunities for lots of people to do this. They could do them with us. They could do it with CoinCloud. They could do it by themselves. So if what we're doing and we do not yet know if we've succeeded yet, although we did a small drop of Dumpling Mafia bosses, which were pretty expensive, 0.0888 Ethereum. And we sold dozens of those. And a lot of them were to prime, prominent chefs or other people in the food world. And now we dropped 4,888. And we're going to be, you know, and we are filmed a video with a prominent newspaper. Um, Shirley's working on some TV things that will promote it. So I think we're going to have a very big January and February, <clears throat> but I'm telling you right now, I don't know about the long-term success of this or any food related NFT, but what I'm saying is that you're used to working really, really long hours for a tiny margin and working on NFT is hard and it's going to cost you some money the first time, but Shirley Chung will attest to this. It's less effort than rolling dumplings every single day. Yes. And there's, may be a greater financial reward, but if not, there's still this rewarding thing where you're really engaging a community mm-hmm. and you're having fun, and you're learning about new things. And Shirley is just excited to own NFTs that she created. It's a, it's a neat thing. And also too, you'll, the, the, the discord, it creates community. There's a lot of things that, that will be rolling out that'll make it even more valuable. It's not the, it's not a monetary value as much as it is creating community and I, and, and it express it's like a way to promote yourself without promoting yourself if that makes sense yeah and if you think about where this is all heading right like you know there's going to be different you know crypto atms and kiosks at major arenas all over the world where people can essentially use that to buy um, a digital merch or something that they redeem for physical merch right yeah. and yes i know that people who want to stand in line who just want that t-shirt and they want to wear it the next day there's also people who are just like well i don't want to stand in line let me just scan this on my phone because they'll send me the t-shirt a week from now mm-hmm. and i've unlocked all the and i've locked unlocked all these other perks including the pre-sale for the next five concerts for this band yeah so in fact maybe this thing that because this is the thing you can tokenize anything you can add anything you can add anything of value so i think there's just a lot of applications for different creators to try this. Yeah. But I want to back up a second and also just say, though, but if you're just a single artist and you've hand-drawn three things and you want to try to go to OpenSea and sell it, it's a little bit more complicated than doing it on eBay, you know, than like selling a physical thing on eBay. It's not that much more complicated. No, it's You can not. just do that, too. So this is the point, right? You've got... Um, uh, you know, random talented street artists 
who's got a one of one that he wants to try to sell on NFTs of over here, and you've got Nike and Disney and Reese Witherspoon over there, but it really is part of the same world. You can both go on at the same time. Yeah, and a lot of there's a lot of people like I guess Gary Vee is an example, like who will say if you're if you've got a one of one of one posted it posted below in my in my twitter feed and then he buys people like there's people or other people will buy it it's a way there's a community on twitter i I wonder too i was thinking like the volume that twitter has seen because of the expansion of nfts like how much volume they're they're seeing because i'm because it's it's created a world there's a lot of people that never had twitter accounts or had dormant twitter accounts that now use twitter because but it's but it's a very supportive community where people if you have a one of one if once you start to get involved with the community yeah. you could sell them yeah well, and twitter's gonna they're they're working on verification oh, yeah, of yeah. nfts for profile pictures which is going to be a bigger flex in some point than getting that blue check mark because lots of people have that blue check mark. I mean, I don't have that blue check mark. I've never tried to get one. Maybe I should figure one out now that I'm now in the NFT world. But your biggest flex is going to be your best NFT because that's going to be rarer than a blue check mark, uh-huh. you know, for a lot of people. And it'll be associated with your Ethereum. Like it'll it'll be you know, they'll be able to verify it because a lot of people I think put NFTs as their profiles that are that they don't even own. I've I've seen people call other yeah. people out. And said, "Hey, yeah. that's mine. Why, why do you have that?" So it's it's a it's a wild wild west, but it's the best thing. I I, I it's the best part of the wild wild west because there's not it. I'm right, not, you're I, you're still figuring out the rules. And like, look, it, and then this sort of thing where culture flips keeps flipping. It's inevitable because, like, look, if you want to like dig deep into it, right? Jack Dorsey, who runs Twitter, is a Bitcoin maximalist, which does not really necessarily mean he's anti Ethereum, but just means that. He believes in Bitcoin above everything. He wants Bitcoin to be the monetary standard, right, Uh, for the digital world. And I get it. You know, I applaud that in a lot of ways, right, because he wants to help third world countries and other places that don't have normal access to banking systems or where banking systems have crumbled to, like, basically have access to money. I understand all that. At the same time, the company that he runs is working heavily you know, to do things that will make Ethereum more of a daily conversation yeah. starter for people. But that's that's the whole point. Like, if you're a progressive technology company in 2021, going into 2022, you realize that you're going to have to embrace all these things. And in the case of Twitter, you want people to have conversations about all these things, obviously, because that's what's really just keeping you thriving and growing yeah, yeah. Oh, what so how did this project come about so you know dumpling mafia has been an in real life dining group in los angeles with me shirley chung and carol chen uh eating just like eating chinese food all over los angeles including primarily the san gabriel valley for years other people wanted to be part of this dumpling mafia which was this this casual name that got created on the fly it was never this thing beyond the fact that it was some friends who just wanted to go eat out together while Shirley was developing her dumpling restaurant, Mischi. And um, uh, this is before Carol Chin opened Tartine. And I was writing for Food and Wine at the time, but I just had some extra time to like, go to lunch with them all the time. So it just grew out of that. Okay. And then I've gotten more and more involved in the crypto world over the years. You know, my good friends at CoinCloud who are the biggest digital um, uh, currency ATM company. You know, we were talking about possibly doing things together. You know, they did a big marketing push this summer where they bought that Spike Lee ad about Bitcoin, you know, that Uh, like ran on national TV, got the big New York Times story. You know, they're just growing like crazy. And they also realize that they should be doing more things in the NFT space. And so collectively we had a dinner, I think in early September, talked to this artist, great artist narrator, who had already been drawing some art for Shirley's future Dumpling Mafia restaurant, who very much understands the restaurant world because Shirley met him when he was a server at a restaurant next to her restaurant. And he had drawn a mural there. And we just had a conversation about why don't we try to do something fun that potentially builds community, potentially makes us some money, but potentially also more important than that, just opens us up to doing different things Mm -hmm. in the future. Definitely. And that was sort of the thing where I'm like, I don't think doing this first NFT is going to change anybody's life in any significant way, but maybe being able to do NFTs will eventually change yes, people's lives. That's what it is. Right. And then yeah. it's like, sure, why not try to do the first one now? Why not try to make a lot of mistakes? 
you know, and get some of those over with and then just figure out how to do better because, you know, there are really smart people who, when people ask me, how do I get into NFTs? They're like, well, you're not really going to like the answer. And I'm just talking about how do you get into buying and selling NFTs? And they're like, <clears throat> you're not really going to like the answer. But the answer is go to on MetaMask, load up an amount of Ethereum that feels significant to you, but is not at all life-changing if you end mm -hmm. up losing it all. And just use that as your education fund because you're probably going to lose most of it. Mm -hmm. But then after you've done that, you're going to know how to do this. And then when you reload your Ethereum, you're going to make better decisions. And also, maybe one of your first decisions that might have seemed stupid, like pays off in like some weird way because yeah. it does end up mooning or it does end up unlocking this community for you. And you make friends with in real life perks or it leads to different career yeah. opportunities or it at least leads to a fun vacation. You know, like a lot of people who had never met before have shown up at different crypto and NFT conferences yeah. and really like found the community that they mm -hmm. wanted during the entire pandemic, you know? Yeah, exactly. And it's, yeah, yeah. I think it definitely will open do doors and it puts you on lists. Like it gets you. And once you go into discords and start talking to other people, you'll find like-minded people. You find a lot of maniacs just like you do in re regular life. Like it's just, it's, it's real life, just like <clears throat> real life, but you find a lot of people that, and I would say maniacs is like people that aren't <laughs> like going to kill you people that are more so just like hyped on weird stuff. But uh, I, you also find a lot of like-minded people and once, and they could turn you on to something that's interesting, the NFT world, or it's just, a, it's, uh, it's refreshing to me. It's very refreshing that something like this exists. And I think that if you get involved right now, it's even more refreshing because it's so new and such a, you know, you never know what's going to happen next week and you never know. Like, and also think also too, that it's, it's kind of like a fun thing. Like, when you get to, to mint something that all of a sudden does moon or does does do better than you imagine, that's a cool. It's a cool feeling, right? Or you mint something, right? Like one of our dumpling NFTs, which you know, you go to dumplingmafianft.com. Yes, these things we're, we're trying to make them this new collection very entry level. It's 0 0.008 Ethereum, which what with the price of Ethereum right now, maybe forty bucks, right? Yeah. Yes, I totally understand that there are gas fees that we don't see yeah. that you're going to have to pay. So you may be paying a hundred dollars. You may yeah. be paying $120 total. If you buy at a really bad time, you could be paying more. I advise you not to buy at a really bad time for when it's busy and the gas is high, but like, let's just say that whatever it's a hundred and dollars or $120 all in seems yeah. reasonable, right? Yeah. Maybe it appreciates, maybe it doesn't appreciate, or maybe during the lunar new year, you win a drawing, you just get to go to a party and you get this amazing free dinner. Or maybe, you know, in the near future, when Shirley opens her Dumpling Mafia restaurant, you're on the list for her preview party, right? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and you get all, and you get all the value stuff. back that way. Because, you know, I believe that a lot of the NFT things, right, is that it's also people realizing the thing that a lot of people are realizing, where a lot of times it's better to pay for experiences than it is to pay mm -hmm. for physical things. And just the experience of being in the NFT world is already this wild thing. But if you're the type of person who's kind of social and wants to go places, it will also unlock things for you. I mean, there are crazy in real life board apes and hundreds parties at the NFT New York conference, right? Yeah, I watched a lot of it on Twitter. It yeah, and, and there are certainly people who are some of the people who are the primary or owners of board apes who are just like, yo, I own NFT, so I don't have to talk to anybody. I don't want to go to this shit. But here's the great thing about it. If you have a successful NFT collection like Board Apes or Hundreds, you're going to have thousands of owners and people can choose to use this NFT mm -hmm. however they want. Fun yeah. thing, investment, maybe part of a community, you know, or this is just something that I just bought because I thought it was cool and I'm going to forget about it and look at it in 10 years and see where the world is. I mean, that's great too. Yeah, that's also fun too. It's like, it's like almost like, you bought a bunch of baseball cards and then you look at them 10 years later and then realize, Oh, I didn't realize I had a Mark McGuire rookie card or something. That's just, it's, which he's a bad example because he's probably not worth much, yeah. but, it's, but it's, it's, it's fun. It's, I, it's, and also I, it, the research, I, I'm my, I have a research brain. That's I love researching things. And so that if you enjoy exploring and searching and uncovering things, this is a perfect world too, because there's lots of that involved and i with to it so all the different ways that you can you can go there's on twitter it's there's a dumpling <clears throat> mafia nft 
It's um, on Instagram, which is probably the best way to find us, Dumpling Mafia NFT. Uh, on Twitter, it's Dumpling underscore Mafia. Okay. And there are links to all of our other, and there are links to all of our social media. But I honestly, what I would say is that like this conversation is really just like encouraging people to sort of just like go to OpenSea, which is the biggest marketplace. Yeah. It has lots of issues, but it is by far the biggest marketplace. Start looking around for stuff that you like you know, start following the accounts, maybe of some of the things that you like, then Twitter will start, you know, the algorithm will then send you things that <laughs> yes. are minting and suggest different links and discords for you. If you sort of want to dive into that world or just buy a couple things that you like, and then don't think, of, and don't think about it and don't interact with anybody. You, you can do all of it. So yeah. I'm actually not here to sort of like shill NFTs overall, but what I am here to say, is just that like, Cryptocurrency is here mm -hmm. and the applications for cryptocurrency and programmable money are only starting. And you have all of these big Wall Street institutions that are now looking into it. And it's only a matter of time before you can start, you know, investing in cryptocurrency in your 401ks. Because as you know, now there are Bitcoin futures ETFs and soon yeah. there are going to be Bitcoin spot ETFs. And it's going to happen probably with other coins in the, in the near future. So, you know, none of this is an investment advice, but you feel like this sea change is happening. And I cover .com 1.0 and, you know, years ago, I'm like dating myself in terms of how old I am, <laughs> but I feel a very similar energy. I feel and, similar, that's, yeah. and that's the thing that I want to sort of tell people, you know, like if you look at like even like the best .com venture capitalists, you got to treat this as a thing where you understand that 90% of the things that you do may end up being mistakes and may actually mm -hmm. go to zero, you know, and out of the 10% or whatever, some of them aren't going to go to zero, but they're not really going to do much for you financially. So how is this going to stimulate you? You know, how is this going to like help you mentally, you know, spiritually, how is it going to help you sort of unlock other things that you want in your life? and live a more, more fulfilled life. And yes, how is possibly, if I make good decisions, one of these may be going to make me some money. Mm -hmm. Those are all things that you should be thinking about at the same time. But I think that like, you know, for a lot of people making money is the primary part of it. And like, look, I'm a capitalist like everybody else. I love making money. But like I said, the first part of making money in this world is probably lighting money on fire and making some mistakes. And mm -hmm. some people who do that may just be done and they may not go back, but that's, that's the whole thing. It's out there. There are very, very few rules. You can teach yourself how to do something and be very successful at the very least be very early. And so the way that I kind of look at it is if you're able to do that and it doesn't cost you more than like going to two fancy dinners or then, I mean, why not? Why not try? Yeah. You're going to learn something at the very least. And, and I, I wanted to talk to you specifically too, because I felt like if people heard from me and you, or we're in the same world, but we're in different worlds, talking about NFTs, this thing that they may have heard about, and maybe they've, that's beyond, they might not even know what, the, so at least you hear, hear the term NFT and you hear about Ethereum and Bitcoin and, and people maybe don't even know about that stuff or they've just heard about it. This will give it people an opportunity to delve further into it. Like, oh, Kevin and Andy are talking about it. Let's, maybe I'm curious to find out a little bit more about it. And yeah, I mean, I've told Michelle and Andrew, you know, that you should consider doing your, at Moosecraft Barbecue, you should consider doing your own Mm -hmm. you know, with or without me, because it's just like, you have a product that's very much in high demand and you can really create perks through this, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. If there had been one where there was a 10 of 10 NFT and those were the only 10 people that could have skipped the smorgasbord line, that'd have been really valuable. Yeah. You know? uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, time. the really cool thing about the blockchain is that it's a public record and that's mm -hmm. trackable and you can go through the entire existence of it to see what happened. So if Kevin sells one of his NFTs to some chef, right? And then the chef then resells it or whatever, I can go back and see the entire history. Yeah. And also if I'm the type of person who's like, really wants to find things out, once I know what a chef's wallet is, I can go and see everything that they own. Yeah, yeah. And you know, this may seem like some weird invasion of privacy, but no, that's the whole thing about that's this. That's what makes it beautiful. You're part of this decentralized thing. Everybody has agreed that this thing is a public ledger. So you can see what happens. You can see things go up and go down. And it's just, 
fascinating because if you have a Banksy, a real Banksy or whatever, trying to sort of like track all the ways that it's changed hands in real life is going to be impossible. impossible. <laughs> you have a digital piece of art, you know, you can see exactly what happened between it being created and it ended up being Jay-Z's profile picture or whatever. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's really cool. I, I wonder if we should end it by saying, never give anybody your phrase, your your uh, your past phrase. What do they call it? The, your, uh, oh, yeah, your seed phrase? Your seed phrase, no. yeah. So we should basically end it. It's like, yes, there are a lot of scammers who are always asking for things. Do not ever give up no. anything that seems like personal information. And because this world is so full of opportunity, there are so many influencers who are going to just like slide into your DMs and be like, we can help you do this. Or, oh, my God, we're going to whitelist you on this. Or, you know, let me post a video of this. And it's just like, just like in the world with food influencers who want freebies and all this, it's just like. Exactly. That's exactly, it reminds me of that for sure. Yeah, like, <laughs> fuck these people. Fuck them, you man. already have a good bullshit detector from being in all the other world. It's just like, you know, have it turned up to 11. And, yeah. I'm, you know, be careful out there and have fun. Yeah, have fun. And if again, like I had said earlier, if you're, there's any questions that I'll ask myself or ask Andy, and if we don't know the answer, we could we could pass you on to somebody that would know the answer. And it's just it's a it's a it's a fun world. And if you just want to be voyeuristic and just watch the world for a while and then jump in, do that too. It's that's those a lot of that's a lot most everything's accessible without having to who actually buy in too. Yeah, not, exactly. not to own, not to own it, but to, just to to watch it. Yeah, I'll have links to all those different things. I'll even all the things that we've discussed within this. I'll have links below. I don't know if people will actually use them, and I'll I'll do a companion blog piece too, so that way to try to make it a little easier for people. But it's I'd I'd figure we open the discussion, and maybe in six months we talk again about this and see if your opinions changed, how it's different. Because I'm sure, like we talked to it a year ago, and or even longer, things have changed so much in the world, and so I think we should maybe kind of catch back and then also oh don't you do also a uh what's that I don't, I don't i don't do it but what's that thing called the clubhouse or something is that we still we did do a launch event on clubhouse and um uh, we're still i'm still part of la food gang on clubhouse we're probably going to be doing some things on twitter spaces too so yeah the best way is you can follow me on instagram at andy wong nyla you can follow Dumpling Mafia NFT on Instagram and there'll be posts to okay. whatever we're doing. And honestly, if we talk again in six months or a year, by then it's going to be like, there's going to be some new social media app that people are using for NFTs. I mean, it's all but oh, guaranteed, yeah. you know? I, I agree. And also too, is that is that the most mispronounced thing is people call you Andy Wang instead of Andy Wong? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I, think I, I, don't even, care, I think I've even done it. I've, and I, what, I, what I actually heard, I don't know who I heard, it might've been, I'm not sure. Maybe it was even Andrew or someone said it. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. I've been fucking up his name for so long. I feel all like good. A jackass. <laughs> all good. So at least well, maybe right, you clarify that. Yeah. Thanks for this, Kevin. Thanks oh, for being thank part you. of the Dumpling Mafia community. But Love I mean, yeah, I'm just glad that like there's somebody else in the food world I can talk NFTs with. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. Thanks right, so much. I right, take care. Bye. <laughs>